The World Series of Poker officially kicks off tomorrow, the most important time of the year for anyone who is anyone in the high-stakes world of poker. And there have been some hugely significant wins throughout the years. But what are the most important wins in the World Series of Poker history? What are the wins that have truly mattered, and why? Let's get into the seven biggest and most important wins in WSOP history. But before we do, thank you for checking out Poker Boom. We're quickly coming up on our one-year anniversary, and we're so grateful for how far we've come thanks to you. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and if you've been here before, we appreciate it. Okay, here we go. Starting off at number 7. Starting in 2008, when Peter Eastgate took over Phil Helms' record for the youngest WSOP main event winner. From unknown to unreal again at the World Series, Peter Eastgate, 22 years old, the youngest main event champion ever. The winner of the main had consistently been in their 20s for eight straight years. But this all changed in 2016 when Vietnamese poker player Quy Win, who was 39 at the time, took down the tournament and its over $8 million prize. Win won his seat at the 2016 main event through an $1,100 satellite that his family begged him to sell for the $10,000 entry fee, but he declined. And he was right too because he went on to defeat Gordon Veo in the 181st hand of Heads up with his King 10 against Veo's Jack 10 on a board of King 9 7. Two, three. One of the highlights of his time at the main was that with every pot that he won, his fans yelled out. He's having fun! And he proved that poker was not just a young man's game anymore. And here's number six. You see, 2004 was the last year that Binion's Horseshoe would host the World Series. It was also the year that poker exploded after 2003, where Chris Moneymaker proved that poker was for everyone. Out of a crowded field of 2,576 players, it was Greg Raymer that would come out victorious. Known for his lizard eyes, hologram glasses, and protecting his cards with a fossil, he was nicknamed Fossil Man. Well, it's it's easy to have a pronounced stare down when you can't blink. <laughs> and this nickname would be one that would stick and stand the test of time. Raymer led the final table the entire time for one of the most dominating performances in WSOP history. He would go on to defeat David Williams heads up to claim the massive $5 million prize. Presto! It's hard to imagine. I can't imagine $5 million in my pocket. Moving on to the fifth slot, we mentioned him briefly already, but Peter Eastgate truly changed the trajectory of the WSOP when he broke Phil Hellmuth's 19-year-old record as the youngest WSOP main event champion in 2008. But we're not here to talk about Eastgate, because just one year later, Joe Cata broke Eastgate's record, winning the main event at just 21 years old. He's a kid with a dream come true. 21 years, 11 months, 21 days old. Now we've covered this historic final table that featured iconic players such as Phil Ivey and Darvin Moon in detail. But if you want to learn more about it, check out the full episode. The link is in the description. This was arguably the greatest final table in WSOP history, and it clearly would go on to make history with Kata's monumental win. Kata took home a very substantial 8.5 million for his work, beating out almost 6,500 players. His winning hand was pocket nines, which he got all in pre-flop against Moon's Queen Jack suited. The board ran 8-2-7, King-7, securing Kata the victory. Youth has been served once again at the main event. Congratulations to Joe Kata our 2009 main event champion. Number four. There's arguably no bigger personality in poker than that of Scotty Wynn. I used to get mad, jump on the table, and dance in the seat. <laughs> and there's also arguably no better quote than the quote from Wynn at the 1998 World Series of Poker. You call gonna be all over, baby. Wynn said this to Kevin McBride during the final hand when there was a full house on the board with eights full of nines. McBride would go on to call Wynn just playing the board. I call, I play the board. And Wynn flipped over Jack-9, giving himself an even bigger full house. But Scotty Wynn warrants more attention than just this entry. So if you want to learn more about him, we've got a great video all about the poker legend. Check out the link in the description and let us know your favorite Scotty story in the comments. All right, now we're in the top three. You can't talk about significant WSOP victories without bringing up the incomparable Johnny Chan. Chan impressively won back-to-back -back WSOP main events in 1987 and 1988. Last person ever won back-to-back 
of the World Series of Poker. That is a big deal. Yanlis was able to make it a three-peat in 1989 when he went heads up against an up-and-coming player you might have heard of named Phil Helmuth. But unfortunately, he came up short. Of Helmuth's victory here, Mike Sexton would go on to say, To be honest, it was just like Stewie, referring to Stu Unger, when Phil won his first tournament in 1980. No one gave him a chance either. It was his first time and no one thought this youngster would win. And that is just how they treated Phil. But Phil did not lack confidence, even at that young age. But back to Chan, he is still the last player in WSOP history to be able to win the tournament back to back, and he's currently tied with Doyle Brunson, Eric Seidel, and Phil Ivey for the second most WSOP bracelets, with 10, behind only Phil Helmuth himself with 17. In second place, it's someone everyone in the poker world knows of. We're talking about the kid, Stu Unger. And back in 1997, Unger was attempting his comeback after many years plagued by addiction. Backed by Billy Baxter. I always felt like he could almost see through the cards. He was a he was a savant. Unger played remarkably in the 1997 WSOP main event, eventually making his way all the way to the final table, where the final heads-up battle saw him clinch his third WSOP victory when he made a straight on the river with Ace Four. Deuce, Deuce. Dewey wins the tournament. Stu Unger has won three World Series of Poker. After his victory, Unger was interviewed by Gabe Kaplan for ESPN, and he showed a picture of his daughter Stephanie to the camera, dedicating the win to her. I said, Stephanie, I love you too much for you to disown me. I said, I'm going to win the tournament, and it's where you you go on loving me. She, I guaranteed a victory, and I proved myself worthy of it. This has gone down as one of the most poignant and heartfelt moments in WSOP history, especially considering that Unger would pass away just a year later, when he was found dead in his motel room due to a heart attack brought on by years of drug abuse. And finally, in the number one spot, you knew it was coming, especially on a channel called Poker Boom. But no list of important poker wins would be legitimate if it didn't cap off with Chris Moneymaker's win at the 2003 WSOP. Throughout his historic run, Moneymaker would knock out multiple poker legends, Johnny Chan, Phil Ivey, and Dan Harrington, to name a few. His victory changed the trajectory of poker, proving that poker was a game for the masses and that fairy tales do come true. Four years ago, Chris Moneymaker was a Tennessee accountant. Now he's a household name in the poker world. After winning the main event at the World Series of Poker. And since it's almost our one year anniversary on the channel, go back and check out our very first video all around Moneymaker and the rise of the poker boom. The link, as always, is in the description. Thanks for watching. And that's it for this one. If you made it to the end, we truly appreciate it. Now that the WSOP is almost in full swing, what are some WSOP stories you'd like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.